And so this is kind of a kicked up casserole of the one that we grew up with. A lot more flavor and just a few different changes to make it really, really yummy. So, and it's easy too. So I'm gonna start out with a little bit of butter. And I sometimes think casseroles get a bad rap and people give me a hard time about them. Let me tell you, uh, in my book, sometimes there's just nothing better because it's all in there. With this recipe, you really don't have to do much more. You can toss together a salad and call it a day. And you can make it ahead. So if you need to bring a dish to pass for luncheon or you're just looking for a great casserole to serve on a Friday night during Lent, this one really is a winner. So I've got some finely diced onion and celery. I love going out to fish fries on Friday night, but during Lent, they can be really busy. So sometimes we opt to stay in and go to fish fries other nights outside of Lent um, and just you know stay in and make a nice seafood dinner in. So onion and celery, and I've got it really finely diced because it's a casserole, so we don't want big chunks. It's not like a soup or a stew. All right, so I'm just gonna let that hang out and saute a little bit. Now I'm gonna drop my uh, noodles. You can use a couple of different types of noodles for this. Shell noodles are really fun to use. Um, I'm just gonna use egg noodles, but normally I use those either medium-sized shell noodles or just egg noodles for this. And we're gonna do a whole bag. This is gonna make a, a big batch, nine by 13. And I love the leftovers. I think the leftovers are great to have another night down the week or pack for lunch. A little salt in your water there. Always important to season that water. Big, big goings on in Green Bay. Girls State Basketball Tournament, uh, tournament kicks off. And uh, my daughter's high school, Notre Dame High School, the girls team is doing really well. And they're in the state tournament. And uh, it's really kind of cool because the, we don't have to go to Madison for the game. It's right here at the Rush Center in Ireland. My daughter, who's on the dance team, they're going to be dancing for it. So we're going over to watch. Um, Friday, the girls play at 1.30, so it should be a ton of fun. And yeah, they won it last year, so it's gonna be pretty exciting for all those girls' teams. All right, and all the teams that are in playoffs right now. Okay, a little bit of garlic salt. Um, growing up, we didn't have you know access to fresh herbs and fresh garlic. Uh, we kept it pretty simple in my house, so I still love to keep garlic salt on hand. It really adds some nice flavor. And I think that's where some tuna casseroles can go wrong. They can be a little bit bland. This one is going to have a lot of great flavor. You're going to notice just a few different things going on than the casserole that you grew up with. We've got two cans. A lot of tuna casseroles call for just one can of tuna fish, but we're going to do two. And I love to use the white albacore tuna packed in water. That's my tuna of choice for this, but, you know, just whatever you like or whatever's on sale or in your budget. And then it's really important to drain that really well. You don't want any of the liquid from the tuna can getting into that casserole. All right. This is one of my mom's favorites. My mom lives in Arizona, so gosh, I wish I could send her a little bit of this. She'd love it. I'll have to call her today and told her I'd make it on the show, and maybe I'll inspire her to make it too. Okay. So our vegetables are starting to get a little bit soft. And now here's another way that this casserole takes a little bit of a turn. Most casseroles call for one can of cream soup. In this case, I love to use cream of mushroom soup. You could also use cream of celery soup if you weren't a big fan of the mushroom. But my casseroles, I really like some added flavor, so I'm using two cans. every little last bit of that out of there. Okay, speaking of flavor, I'm gonna add a little bit of dry white wine. 
just really gonna kind of get rid of that cream of mushroom soup taste and give it some nice flavor. In goes our tuna. And then you'll notice my casseroles have quite a bit of liquid in them when they start out with. In this case, we're using pasta. So whenever a casserole calls for pasta, potatoes, or rice, you really need a lot of moisture, a lot of liquid, because when it bakes, the starch really tends to kind of, you know, suck up the liquid, and then you're left with a really dry, kind of dry as an Arizona desert casserole, and I'm not a big fan of that. So you'll notice quite a bit of liquid to start out with, that after it bakes, you'll be left with a really nice creamy casserole. So we're gonna add some milk. We love our lamer's milk here. So quite a bit of it. And I'm also going to do some black pepper. Maybe a touch more garlic salt. Now I don't want to overcook my pasta, and that's another key when it comes to making really good casseroles, is if you're doing a casserole with rice, pasta, or potatoes, you want to undercook them a little bit, because remember, they're going to bake again in the oven. And those noodles will turn to mush if they're overcooked. So I actually like to undercook them a little bit. Okay, this looks perfect. So I'm going to just drain my noodles really well, get all that water out, add them to my skillet, turn off the heat and just make sure the noodles are all combined and make sure there's plenty of liquid. If not, I can add a little more wine or a little more wa uh, milk, I should say. And is this bringing back memories? And I can already tell I do. She said she doesn't think her mom's casserole is that good. Oh, now you're in trouble and I'm in trouble. Well, this one is good. I promise. Oh, I know. I forgot to put in my peas. Now, this is optional. I really love peas in this casserole. I think it brightens it up, gives it some nice color. And you can see. I still need a little bit more milk because, again, this is going to bake, and I want this to be nice and creamy. So it will suck all that up, especially if you're making this ahead and refrigerating it before you're baking it. And about a cup of peas. And you don't have to cook them at all. You can just throw them in there partially thawed or even frozen, and they'll keep their nice green color. Add one more splash of milk. See the noodles really just suck up that liquid and after it bakes. Okay, so now I've got a nice big casserole dish. And I like to make sure and spray your casserole dishes or you're going to be scrubbing them forever in a day and that is no fun whatsoever. So spray them well. Anna agrees. No fun scrubbing the casserole dish. Anne's giving me the evil eye because I didn't use all the peas. All right, we'll put them all in there. Right in here it goes. Now, I am a big fan of the toppings of a casserole. It's probably my favorite part. So I'm always looking for fun, different kind of crunchies to put on top. And, of course, most casseroles are good with a little cheese on top, too. Here you go, Ann. So for this, my cheese of choice is shredded cheddar. Shredded Swiss would also be really nice. So I'm going to cheese it up here a little bit. just want to make sure this is all mixed. And then my crunchy is just crushed up potato chips. So you know when you get down to the bottom of the bag, just kind of crush that up and sprinkle those over the top. Now this is a quick bake. If you're baking this right away after you make it, 
about 30 minutes or so until the top is, is golden and nice and bubbly. If you're going to refrigerate it, remember your bake time is also always going to be a little bit longer. And I wouldn't cheese it or put the chips on top until right before baking. So if you're making that casserole ahead of time, you can um, park it in the fridge covered without the cheese and the chips and then put the cheese and the chips on before baking or even the last 20 minutes or so of baking. And it's going to take a little longer if it's ice cold out of the fridge. Bake time, maybe 45 to 55 minutes. Yes, Anne says, ooh, pretty. And it is. It's really, really pretty. And it's tasty, too. Look at that. The chips get gold and the cheese gets all melted. And then the noodles and the tuna and the peas um, all bubbly and warm underneath. I can hardly wait for it to cool down just a bit um, so I can dive in and take a taste and go back, you know, take a take a stroll on memory lane. Lots of great memories with this casserole that's kind of been kicked up from the one I uh, grew up with, and it is a winner. Recipes on the website. You can also pick up this recipe at any area festival foods. Coming up, some more things that we're going to make just a little bit better. We're going to tell you about a really neat area organization helping lots of families. Also, we're going to show you how to mix and match fabrics in your home. We're making chicken lettuce wraps and the best ever BLT. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back.